and joining me uh, to make a full quorum um, is Mr. Labonge and Mr. Parks. So right, there are three of us here, and we're going to go through the agenda, gentlemen. Um, and with your support, um, the lady that wanted to do public comment in the beginning, has she left? She has. She has left. Okay. Uh, and that's been uh, discussed. Very good. I appreciate that. Let's give this card back to uh, the great man over there. Okay. Mr. Parks, welcome. Thank you. Um, we have um, a short agenda today. Things should move rather quickly. And with my colleague's support, I would like to put on consent item one, two, and three. There's no opposition. It's, it's just a renewal of the preferential parking district in CD 13, one in CD 4, and another one in CD 4. It's a renewal of the preferential parking district parking, one, two, and three. Fine. Uh, fine for Mr. Parks and, and fine um, with Mr. Laban, just unanimous. Maria, I just took your words away. Excellent job. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, item four. Item four is a CAO report relative to the third contract amendment with Ilium Associates extending the contract term on a month-to-month -month basis for a maximum of six months to increase the contract amount up to an additional $1.09 million for the continued marketing and advertising of the city's transit services. Great. This was suggested that we could do this on consent, but I'd like you to give you a two-minute quick uh, Reader's Digest, and if there are any more issues from, from my colleagues, uh, fine. Okay. Angela Broom in CAO's office. Uh, the department requests to execute this third contract amendment with Ilium Associates on a month-to-month -month basis for a maximum of six months while the competitive process to select a vendor for a new contract is completed. Um, as I understand it, DOT, uh, the report from DOT recommending a new vendor for the, a new contract has uh, left the mayor's office and been referred to my office, the CAO's office, so we should have a report coming in a few weeks. I recommend approval. Um, Mr. Park, I have three questions I'll just put on the record. Um, what delayed the development of an RFP for this contract? Um, perhaps the department is here to speak to Just that. real quickly, just, just for the record. And then, of course, what is the specific timeline for the new contract award? And, of course, what is the funding source for the additional contract amount? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Phil Aker from Department of Transportation. Um, the RFP was prepared in uh, February. Um, it had gone, it has went out to a number of uh, firms. We have the uh, proposals back. We prepared a report and it's in the mayor's office now. So we're actually, uh, as far as we're concerned, we're ready to go with the new recommendation. Terrific. And, and, and what is the specific timeline for the new contract award? Uh, the mayor's office did re refer the uh, DOT report to our office, and so I think in a matter of weeks we'll have our report ready to come to council. Great. And the last question again, of course, was the funding source for this additional contract amount? It's Proposition A funds this service and has funded this service. Very good. The Proposition A local return. And, and I should say that um, the, uh, con the incumbent contractor has agreed over the last probably 15 months to a 10 percent decrease uh, a discount in the rate in the billings and the, these are on uh, as needed uh, work rather than an absolute amount so that actually we're saving some money with the extension of the existing contract appreciate that who just says who are the two companies that did on, on the current RFP Ilium Ilium Associates the incumbent and Pulsar uh, uh, Pulsar Advertising. Pulsar? What's that? I didn't understand. Pulsar? You Pulsar. P-U-L-S-A-R. And then let me ask just for clarity on your report. When you say that the... Uh, when you say on your page two of your report that uh, part of their contract they deal with the transit fleet logo and also bus stop design, is that the advertising on buses or no. is that something different? That's a separate contract. Okay, that's separate. So that's, now what about uh, bus stop design? Is that the street furniture? No. Okay, so no. This, it has to do with the stop, with the sign that indicates that a bus stops here. And uh, they design all of the dash uh, signs. And then we have some freestanding commuter express signs where we don't share a stop with Metro. Okay. 
think that could – let me ask you, Maria, we've been waiting to find out, do you know who handles or where the issue of street furniture is? Is that Public Works or is that in the Chief Committee? That's usually Public Works. Thank you. That's Street Services. Yeah, Public Works. Yeah. Okay. Ms. Labonte, do you have any comments? No. Can we move forward with it? Okay. So the recommendation is to approve the DOT's recommendations to extend the limitless contract. Thank you. All in favor? Yes. So moved. Thank you so much. And we'd like to get that to counsel as soon as possible. Talk to the clerk. Very good. Appreciate that. Great. Thanks. Item number five. Item number five is a DOT report relative to submitting a list of proposed projects and applications to Caltrans for the Federal Safe Routes to School Grant Funding Program. Very good. We have a public comment card. Is it Jessica or Jesse? Jesse, after this. Sure you can. Sure. Okay, fine. Okay. Staff, come up and give us a quick update on this program. Good afternoon, Council members. Good afternoon. My name is Arsene Mangasarian. I'm with the Department of Transportation. The report in front of you is the Department of Transportation's request to authorize Council and Mayor to go ahead and submitting grant applications to Caltrans to compete for the Safe Routes to School funds. It also asks for Council and the Mayor to approve the list of proposed projects that is attached to the list here and to allow the staff to prepare the applications. Public comment, come on up. I'll leave the staff here. We're ready. Good afternoon, committee members. My name is Jessica Meany. I'm the California Policy Manager for a national nonprofit called the Safe Routes to School National Partnership. And I just wanted to commend the City of L.A. who recently allocated $1.2 million to create a citywide Safe Routes to School plan. As you'll see from this project list, the staff is doing tremendous work to move things forward and prioritize and identify projects. But you'll see it's still challenging here, these list of projects, to make sure we're really hitting it in a strategic manner. I defer to the staff on this list, but I really encourage the city, this committee, to request to be presented with the information called Transportation Injury Mapping System. It's called TIMS. It shows us the highest collision rates, especially around schools in California and in Los Angeles. And Lon Nguyen, a DOT staffer, does an amazing analysis of that. So I encourage you. I'm here to support this, but say, please, let's get to work on creating a citywide plan so we can do a strategic plan that takes in the areas of highest need and have a meaningful approach. That makes a lot of sense. Respond, but not at this moment. I have another. But you can sit there. Jonathan, I'm sorry, the last. Lopez, come on up, sir. Join us. Good afternoon. My name is Jonathan Lopez, and I'm the Southern California Coordinator for California Walks, an organization that advocates walking throughout the state for everyone. And I'm here to talk about this issue because I've been working with California Walks and a couple of nonprofits in Los Angeles and also the San Fernando Valley that were not aware of the process of selection for this committee. And subsequently, although their grant applications are ready at this time, they were not included in the process. And I'm here to request that the committee consider accepting applications during the next five or ten days from organizations that meet the requirements that already have in place city contracts on other grants such as GRID and can demonstrate that they are viable nonprofits and have in order all their financial conditions to meet the requirements of this grant. I appreciate that. Seth, could you respond to both of the public comments? Yes. I'd like to appreciate Jessica's participation. She has been a very influential person in the decision process. She's been participating in our task force committee meetings and everything I do. I appreciate your comments. To respond to Mr. Lopez, you know, we have sent out an e-blast to all the neighborhood community through the DON, and we have – I've had spoken to many, many chairmen of the different, you know, communities, and we felt that everybody was well informed of this opportunity. Thank you very much for that. Mr. Labonte? I just want to know, how was your coordination with L.A. Unified? Yes. Brad – I think Brad Smith from the – But there is coordination, direct coordination? 
Uh, direct coordination is on a continuous basis. Mr. LeBange, you know, we always meet in the staff. I don't, but staff meets with LAUSD, and they discuss these issues with LAUSD. And they selected these locations statistically, or what was the uh, this, criteria? These this locations were selected by the task force committee that we formed. And task force committee uh, included representatives from the council offices, the mayor's office, CLA, CAO, right. all right. the technical staff that right. was involved in this. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, Mr. Park, do you have a motion yes. to move forward? Yeah, let me just ask one question. Yes. Could you give us an update on the red flag program? Red flag programs, um, when, when projects are late, it, meaning they don't meet their deadlines, there are milestones that you have to um, follow and you have to complete with, with Caltrans. Those projects that don't they don't meet their deadlines, they are red flagged. And uh, they, they may be in the design stage, they may be in the right away stages, or they may be in the later construction stage. All the red flags that the city of and City of Los Angeles is, is, is treated as one entity. So any department, all the nonprofits, DOT or BSS or everybody who submits those applications, those are treated as one uh, entity. We have been able to remove all the red flags. From, 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 from all the uh, City of Los Angeles projects. So we are okay to go ahead and submit the application. Let me just, uh, yes. so I'm clear. We're talking about all projects that we're working with Caltrans, not other sources of funding? All the projects related to Safe Route to School. Safe Route to School. Yes. Okay. So then, regardless of the funding source? Yes. Okay. And so all of our red flags have been removed? Have been removed, yes. Right. And that could be any level of that it's slowed down, whether it's in the planning or whether it's engineering, no matter what the, the cause of it, they red flag it if you lose. Yes, we're okay to go. Yes. Okay. So you can't submit again if, you don't, if you're in a red flag? Well, with this process and then new, new, uh, they, they update their, their data. So let's say if they update the data in six months from now and we're still late on some of those projects, that those issues that we resolve with them, if those issues come back, then we will be red flagged and we'll be red flagged for the next round which of uh, the state cycle, which is in September. But I do really not expect that to happen. Mr. Parks, I mean. Right. Thank you. Okay, for quick, the record. Quick question, oh, just real quick. Yes. Does the district engineer handle this, or how do you handle it administratively? In, when you mean administratively, inside, or? In, yeah, in, like right now, who's, who is, is it the district engineer? Are they involved with this? Or LA DOT district engineers are involved in this, yes. Right, and LA Unified has people who are involved on it. I, on a continuous basis, you know, that's... Uh, yeah, the gentleman that, who came in here said he wanted to be involved but wasn't able to be involved. Why weren't you able to be involved? During the process when we learned about the grant and started to apply for the grant, we attended all the meetings regarding the grant, it was never clear, made clear to us that we needed to be a part of the task force. And subsequently, what we were told was that we had to know about it the previous year to be included. And we went to all the LAUSD meetings, and at those meetings each time, we asked uh, what is the process to be considered for the grant, and each time we were not told. When that was your organization uh, founded? Um, the organization was founded about 15 years ago. Uh -huh. I've We're never heard of it before, and I support organizations. New Directions for Youth in the San Fernando Valley. Well, that I heard of, yeah. but you came in and said you're a walk group. Uh, I work with, um, I just recently started as an employee of California Walks. But, but New Directions you, for Youth I got, is the organization that I'm talking about applying Well, when you spring. spoke, you didn't say that. You said the walk group. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm so that being said, I think you got to go with the process because they want to administer these things quickly and try to match the school year coming up in the fall. But in the future, and I appreciate your interest in walking and all the other things, uh, you now you know the process. I do. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. LeBange, for that clarification, too. Just quickly for the record, uh, how many of the project applications have been submitted before? Uh, from the beginning, from the inception, from 2000, how many applications we have submitted? I don't have the number, but I know how much money we have been awarded. Uh, no, I think, Is excuse that, me, I think you meant of these that are on the list, how many of these that are on the list? Yeah. Uh, well, we received uh, close to 20, 28 uh, um, requests for applications, and we're submitting uh, 12. And uh, if awarded, when will the funding become available? Um, I can say strongly by the end of the year, like, Late November, early December, maybe earlier, but for sure by, by the end of the year, like by December 31st. Uh, is the state safe routes to school funding program anticipated in the near future? Yes, yes, uh, in September of this year, in, within 
next week. Uh, and then I would like you to meet with Jonathan Lopez and yes, keep no. a connection there for future Thank support. you very much. I, I, for the records, I have talked to your staff. I have talked to the staff from there, very organizations good. about all the issues and how we can go by like like what you mentioned. Mr. Lopez. It's a very good way of moving around. So we'll have that in the future. And, okay. um, do we have a motion? Move. Uh, second. Uh, okay. Very Unanimous. Good. Thank you so Thank much. You very much. Appreciate Thank everybody's much. comments on this particular Thank issue. You. Uh, item number six. Item number six of the CAO report relative to the sale of city property located at 3410 South La Siena Boulevard to LA County MTA in the amount of $3.26 million for the on-site construction of a five-story parking structure for the Expo Quarter Light Rail Transit Project. Okay. Um, I have three, two quick questions for this. Hi. Hi. Uh, here are my questions. Uh, why does the city need to pay MTA to preserve the water and sewer lines? Good afternoon, Councilmember Delilah Pucha, CAO. That was worked out with the Bureau and MTA. The city um, did not have to move the sewer lines, but since they requested to move the permanent ATF to the um, east side, I believe, of the property, they agreed to pay for the um, preservation of the sewer lines. In addition to that, that cost also includes um, the building of an easement that the city requires so they could move vehicles in and out of the facility. So that cost consists of the construction cost that they built the easement for. Very good. I appreciate that. Is this parking uh, facility necessary as a project mitigation measure, or is it to provide additional parking? This parking is going to be a five-story parking garage for the Exposition Quarter Light Rail project. From um, in reading the the attachments, MTA felt that this parking structure was necessary and required as part of the project for to facilitate um, public transportation. This is solely upon MTA's request. Very good. And um, my recommendation is to approve the CAO's uh, recommendations. And for colleagues, is there any comments? On no. This? MTA's here. MTA want to add anything? Uh, All right. Good. And the CAO saw it. Mr. Parks, uh, this is in the 10th district, uh, uh, oh, yeah, this is and the this money then goes to the general fund. It doesn't no, no. You, I think it pays back the sewer, sewer construction maintenance construction fund. Maintenance fund. Yes, sir. So pays back because that's what that was the fund that purchased they used, the land. Got it. Yeah. Oh, super. It was, it was, yeah, of, yeah. It was part of one of got the. Got it. Yeah, smart. Smart. yeah I'm good. I still move. So move. I didn't. It was part of one of the wastewater systems. That it was. It, they actually originally purchased the property for the um, East Central Interceptor Street. Right. I remember that one. Okay. In 2000. I moved. Is brilliant. Is any? No, I'm not. Let me ask you one question. What's well, that motion that Mr. Weston and I went forward on? What's the status, if you know, of the Arlington and Expo property? Uh, is that the one on Cimarron? It's, well, Cimarron is a little further east. That's where we're doing some Arlington additional Expo. Uh, construction. But it's the it's the vacant lot that the uh, that MTA is using for their equipment and such on the west side of Arlington. I and would I have to defer that one to one um, and another and the one on La Brea or La Cienega is being vacant and surplus. I was just wondering if there's any. I would have to defer that to the part the department. We just received the documents from Cimarron last week. I have not seen the Arlington documents yet. All right. Thank you. Okay. And it might be just to you know it might be part a part of it. We just completed the construction in May 2011. So as the department gets the documents, then they forward it to our office. Okay, so moved. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your, your report. Well, we're going to item number seven. That's the last item we have here. I'd like to um, uh, start off with this, with the report of what it is, but then I'd like uh, Ms. Hans, uh, deputy, is Ms. Hans, deputy here in the room, uh, to come on up to the mic uh, and hear the thing, and then we're going to go through all the, all the cards that the community has put before. Thank you. Item number seven is a Han LeBon motion directing DOT to report relative to removing the on-street parking meters in downtown San Pedro and Wilmington in, in order to encourage visitors to these small business areas. Very good. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Rosendahl. I'm Gordon Tuber from Councilman Han's office, and uh, thank you for, for having us here today. Uh, we're here to ask for help with the uh, parking situation in downtown San Pedro and Wilmington since 2009 when the meter rates were increased from 25 cents to one dollar. We've had a lot of uh, merchants and constituents asking for uh, relief from the situation. They feel it's been a, a strong deterrent to 
people coming to downtown San Pedro and the Wilmington Business uh, Corridor. Uh, I will say that Department of Transportation has been helpful to us in providing off-street parking permits, uh, streamlining hours from 8 to 6, Monday through Saturday, dropping Sunday enforcement. We still have a lot of folks that are asking us for relief from this. They feel it's been uh, kind of a, a, a little dagger in the business community to uh, attract people to come to downtown San Pedro. And we just ask for your help to uh, um, consider removing the meters and uh, adding uh, free parking as a business tool for our, our business communities. We appreciate that. Will staff comment on that real quickly and then we'll go to the public? What are we looking at here? I see a figure of 430,000 and I see cost to remove is 30,000. I see 919 meters. What, help me sure. out. Um, <clears throat> good afternoon, Council Members. Amir Sadati, Assistant General Manager. Um, the Department was able to look at some preliminary figures. Um, right now we're estimating the annual revenue from the parking meters in San Pedro is about $430,000 annually. We have approximately 919 meters in both San Pedro and Wilmington. Uh, as the motion requested, the meter hours are 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. except Sunday. Um, time limits are one hour. Have, we have about 24 percent that have one hour, 73 percent have two hours and others. Uh, we looked at, again, um, San Pedro and Wilmington consist about 2 percent of the meters citywide. And they bring in about 1 to 1 percent, 1 to 1.5 percent of the revenue citywide. So 2 percent of the meters bring in about 1 to 1.5 percent of the revenues. Um, we quickly, again, just these are preliminary numbers. We'll be happy to report back with a full detail for you. Uh, we looked at some of the collection costs and maintenance costs, and those come in about 178,000. So we're looking at a net annual revenue of about 250K from the meters. And we also take a quick look at the enforcement revenues, and, and both for San Pedro and Wilmington, that was roughly about uh, 450000 to the general fund from the enforcement revenues coming in. So basically, you add up the, the money by taking out the meters, costs us, we lose. Um, and I'm sorry, yes, and if we were to remove them, um, Council Member, uh, it's approximately about $30,000 to remove the posts, the meter heads, um, and, you know, the, the signs don't need to be changed because they already have the time limits, so we don't have to redo the signs. The signs are already there. Um, it just becomes a little bit harder for enforcement because we don't have the meters that help create the turnovers. But when you added up all that money, uh, what was the total money? Uh, net, n yeah, net meter revenue after you take out the expenses was about 250k a year, and then the enforcement was about 450. So that's about 700 thousand um, dollars. Yeah, the majority of the enforcement revenue in San Pedro came from the expired meters. It wasn't for the time limits. The majority of the tickets in, issued in San Pedro for the expired meters. Um, we didn't do a full analysis. Again, these are just preliminary numbers that we'll be happy to um, report back to you uh, in more detailed analysis. Great. Mr. Levine. Just as you uh, begin the robust discussion, as you're always so good as the chair, just want to put on the table. I had this experience in other areas where you bag the meter head for 90 days, 120 days, have time to see what it is. There's some streets that maybe should be no metered. Some should be metered, maybe, maybe not. 953 uh, is a lot. So I just want to just uh, to put a uh, friendly request is if it makes sense for everybody, and I'm looking at the deputy for Ms. Hahn, to bag them uh, and then uh, have a period of time where it says free parking, uh, courtesy of uh, City of Los Angeles LA DOT, and then see what happens because there's an adjustment in all communities. Uh, also, whether would lowering the rate from a dollar an hour to a quarter an hour make a difference? I think it would make merchants happy to roll back to a quarter an hour, certainly. Right. So they may look at that because there's still some on the old uh, price. Is that correct? All of our meters are up to a dollar an hour no, in no. all communities. No, no. In Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, in back in um, 2000, uh, fiscal year 2008, 2009. They didn't adjust the meter rate. Correct. Up. The it. minimum in the city of LA is a dollar. The maximum is four bucks an hour. There's no more quarter an hour meter. No, back in fiscal year 08, 09, the city council adopted a budget that raised all the meter rates. But look at that. What about bagging them? See what happens. Anyway, let's have that discussion. 
Just one point of clarification. We're not asking to drop enforcement. We'd still like to have enforcement by chalking up the tires every two hours from DOT. We're just asking for free parking. Also, we're hopeful that uh, we'll attract enough new business that will make up the loss of revenue in the city by uh, increasing sales tax. Okay, my hope is this, because um, if the chalking, it costs money to do that. You have to have personnel there and all those kind of things. Uh, so I want you to work, and we're going to have the public speak, closely with the department, okay? And as Mr. Labange is saying, you're going to report back, uh, and what we're going to report back, assuming my colleagues agree with this, on removing the on-street meters in downtown Wilmington, which account for what it accounts for in order to encourage visitors to this uh, small business area. But we'll hold it here, and we'll get a report back before we take any action. Mr. Uh, I th you know, first of all, I think that's totally inconsistent with all the meters we have. Every community that we have says that we could impact negatively on the business community because we have meters. And the issue is they also will complain when you remove the meters that everybody comes and sits there for a longer period. And so I think you can have some adjustment of the hours and the, and the, and the dollars, but I don't think you can get rid of them. I think annually you guys in the 15th district get rid of them during the holiday season. For two weeks during the holiday that's season. That's like 50 or $60,000 that we bite our lip and say, okay. But to get rid of them totally, that, that defeats what we've asked uh, uh, LADOT to go out and find more meter slots. And you're not going to put meters in residential communities. The only place you're going to put them is generally in business areas. And everywhere there are business areas, people are going to say, if I didn't spend this dollar an hour, uh, I have more people in my store, but on the other hand, they're the same people that complain, if these people don't move more rapidly, uh, I can't get business in the store. And it tur turnover is a, is a consideration. Why you, the meters, they the turnover. The other thing with the credit cards and such, they give them more convenience. The other issue I think we have to think about is that in addressing uh, the whole issue of, uh, of meters is that uh, it does produce uh, some revenue that keeps the lights on for the city. And if you uh, look at some of the things that we're, that we're confronted with, I don't think we can just give up. It's almost, if you, with the, you take the maintenance out, you're between 500 to a million dollars on revenue. And, and to, you know, that's, uh, when you say have them chalk the tires, that would be a phantom employee. They don't exist. We have a, a pretty active Department of Transportation enforcement right now, even with the existing meters and the new meters. They're, 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 they're out there every day and uh, very vigilant. Hey, I appreciate vigilant. Your, your comments to the Councilman, but, but uh, this is a work in progress. Before we even say report back, we want to hear from the public and what they have to say, okay? Can we have Catherine? Um, I, I don't know. Am I reading it right? Catherine Casey? Great. Great. Come on up. Scott? Okay. Gordon? Did, did, I, did I mention, um, I'm, I said Scott, what about Gordon, did I mention you? Come on up. Yeah, Gordon's on already up. spoke. Mm -hmm. Oh, you already spoke, you're it. Yeah. Michael, where's Michael? Come on up, Michael. <clears throat> then we have an Anko. Aniko, come on up. I'm sorry on names, you know. I got a lot of faults, and that's one of them. I can't do that, right? And who is the lady that just handed a card? Where is she? Okay. Thank you. Right. So much okay. Uh, you can start, ma'am. Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. Excuse me, I need my Your name for broken glasses. My name is Aniko Schuler. I'm co-owner of a business in downtown San Pedro, Mishi Strudel Bakery and Cafe on 7th Street. I would like to read to you a letter that was given to us by uh, Mrs. Alma Angeline Dialio, the San Pedro United Methodist Church leader and San Pedro resident for 39 years. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am the worship chairwoman for the San Pedro United Methodist Church, 580 West 6th Street in Old Town, San Pedro. I serve on several committees and have the ear of many of our visitors and members. It is my understanding that there might be a possibility that the meters would be removed from the existing metered spaces here in front of our property. We have had meters in front of our sanctuary, education buildings, and vacant property for years, with only one handicapped street space and a small parking lot 
around the corner near fifth street on grand avenue and next to the alley on site is a child care center for speech disabled children parents experience a hardship daily monday through friday dropping off and picking up their toddlers as the meters are quote on and won't allow for short uses there is really no reason for them to invest in and pay for a large chunk of time as they are not expecting to be there long enough yet often get tickets if they wish to quickly sign in or sign out their children and don't have change the quote meter maids are relentless many parents are lower income families they often don't have proper change credit cards or untimely money for fines our visitors and members have had similar problems with meter issues people are discouraged from coming by to the church office or to use the property the meters are not only a nuisance they sabotaged the quote open doors policy and mission of our church i speak not only for my committee but for our congregants in general who have had problems and run-ins with those meters san pedro does not feel as welcoming as it could and should i urge you to suspend the use of meters in our town let's make it a destination that makes it easier to stay play and shop Thank you respectfully very much. yours mrs alma angeline dialio Thank, Thank you so much sir yes my name is michael schuler i am also the other co-owner of mrs trull baker and cafe uh, i would just like to uh, state that uh, we are representing sort of the seventh street merchants but uh, it's not just the seventh street that is struggling downtown because of the parking situation uh, we see I mean almost daily uh, ticketing at our street and uh, several businesses close by for example last month Nash Cafe uh, just half a block away from us uh, had to close the doors and it was in the daily breeze also stated that uh, one of the main reasons was the parking situation it is very hard to attract people to come to uh, downtown and uh, one of the main reasons of course is that it looks deserted it, it, it they are there is no food traffic and uh, uh, when when we have for example our store when it's empty the cafe uh, it doesn't attract people so even passers by look oh it's empty whenever we have already a, a small uh, percentage of, of customers uh, the the business uh, strives very well and uh, the vacancy rate is uh, way above average in our area several businesses also on on pacific had to close pacific avenue like uh, sunshine market which was also for generations there ramona's bakery closed it was also for generations there and uh, we talked to other businesses like american furniture they were also complaining that uh, their tax revenue that the city would be making is, is uh, higher than than it would be just uh, if if they wouldn't have uh, I mean this parking problem. We are trying desperately to attract people to come downtown from up the hill, and it's it's a very hard struggle. Thank you, sir, for your comments, <laughs> sir. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, my name is Scott Gray. I own with my wife the Maritime Research Center and Nautical Shop, and I'm president of the downtown 7th Street Merchants. I've been on, in the front of the parking issue for two years since, since the rates went up, and I can tell you that our community is angry about this. They feel like the, all their money is coming downtown in the form of increased rates and and parking tickets. This kind of study is the kind of small progress that we've been hoping for at a minimum for two years. Please approve this very small step that's going to at least appease the community for now and that we can be involved with to, to at least get some hope for our business community and let us stop worrying about parking and get back to doing business. That's what we want to do. I don't want to be up here dealing with parking. Now, as for the parking meters, they're not all in the business district. You just heard they're around the churches. They're around all parts but it's interesting that there are business parts of the business community in San Pedro that don't have meters so we're competing with Western Avenue which you may know over by, Ran over by Rancho Palos Verdes 
where they don't have parking rates, where they don't have parking meters. People want to come downtown, they have to pay. And my understanding, too, is that these meters are wanted elsewhere in the city. We heard that the minimum rate is $1 an hour for parking in the city, and that's what it is in San Pedro. The maximum rate is $4. Ship them there, get more money for it, and increase the tax revenues that we will be paying for the increased business that we have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your comments. Ma'am. Okay. Catherine Gray, again, co-owner of the Maritime Research Center Nautical Shop. Do you have Terry in the room, by the way? Yeah. Come on up. And okay. please, you can leave those who okay. have spoken Wait. and let Terry get up there. Thank you. Okay. okay. We, we are here because uh, we need your help. San Pedro is, we always like to think, the small town inside a big city. We are different from any place else in Los Angeles. We are unique. One question I haven't had answered if from anyone yet is, what other part of the city did the parking rates quadruple? Uh, yes, it was just a quarter. Your, your rate? Okay. All right. Yeah, mine too, by the way. Oh, okay. All right. Um, it, it's, it's really been tough on us with that. San Pedro already has a tremendous challenge. We are San, the small business uh, retail business in San Pedro is sandwiched between one of the largest um, mentally ill housing units in the United States. We have an extensive recovery homes, sober living, drug treatment facilities. And between, and on the other side of us is Rancho um, San Pedro. So we, we have, we have a real perception problem that we're not a safe place to come. So those brave souls that do come down and do frequent us, when they do come down, they have this, this horrible parking. And uh, we, we've heard it from day one. One statistic that I have I'd like to throw out at you, the gentleman from the city said that the revenue from our parking right now annually is $430,000 for the uh, Wilmington and San Pedro area. I obtained statistics, what was the revenue for the entire last year, 2008, that it was 25 cents? It was 336,000. So as you can see, if you quadruple the rate, it should have been around a million 300,000. So that alone is a huge red flag, how much business we have lost. Of course, every area is going to say they don't want parking meters, they don't want high rates, of course. But we are unique and we need your help, we're just looking for for something to be fair. Uh, thank you so much for that. We do have Allison who just came in. I know she was in gridlock. Come on up, Allison. Terry, you're up. Thank you, council, council members. Um, I'm here as a consumer. I um, have worked in San Pedro and lived nearby for many years. And I want to point out that many people, the competition with San Pedro are the neighboring cities all of which don't have meters, uh, Rancho Palos Verdes, um, there's Lomita Harbor City, um, and so often friends, acquaintances, people attend my church in San Pedro, when it comes down to where do we go to eat, where, um, let's go somewhere else because we don't want to deal with the parking. Parking is a frequent topic of conversation and mainly complaining. Um, once I'm, when I go to the businesses to um, do my business, uh, to shop, there's always somebody running out saying, oh, I've got to put more money in the meter. These are not people trying to get away with something. They're just trying to not pay too much, and do their business and leave. But then they're always leaving probably sooner than they need to. Um, they just rush out and they don't come back. So I see that going on constantly. I have a lot of friends who are um, business owners in the area, and they've really suffered from it. Some of them are really worried about having to shut their doors very soon. Um, so we're asking that you take the parking meters out and enforce the two-hour rule. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Uh, last comment uh, is from Allison Boyd. Talk about getting in under the wire. You made it. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. Well, as a, as a resident um, on 7th Street in San Pedro and active in the community, uh, I've seen the difficulties that these meters have perpetrated on both the patrons and the residents. We suffer from a very aggressive meter um, force out there who, case in point, one day my partner was coming to me getting some change when I was parked in another slot. A meter guy pulled up right behind her, wrote her a ticket, and it's like, wait a minute. We're getting some change. And his response was, too bad. 
your problem. And we see, uh, if you will, it's like a great white shark of these gentlemen, uh, this one particular gentleman circling our neighborhood. One instance, we were in a meeting for about 15 minutes, and he went by seven times. So it's very predatory. And, and one of the things is we're in a very economic depression in San Pedro, and we're paying a rate that I think is very, very high, especially when you compare it to other parts of the city. Um, you're not getting a benefit for the dollar there. Um, for the most part, the street stays vacant during the day because we just don't have people that want to pay or they'll walk blocks because of that dollar meter fee. And it doesn't seem like much, but it adds up, especially if you're trying to do business. So uh, we would like to see them eliminated and we would like to see an enforcement of a two hour rule to, to prevent business owners from using the system for their own parking purposes, which I don't think is a bad thing at all. But, um, oh, and one last thing about the meters. If you're not conversant with the meters and their operation, you can pull up to those meters 15 minutes before the 6 o'clock shutoff time. It will default to two hours and will charge you for the full two hours, even though it's 15 minutes until uh, no parking fees are enforced. And I don't think that's fair either. A lot of times the meters will not accept coinage. And the way the city feels right now when I call them up, it's like, well, no, use a credit card instead. It's, it's not our problem. And I've had it happen on numerous occasions. So they have their own issues as well. But for the most part, I would like to see them removed and just have the meter, uh, uh, the two hour meter law enforced or not meter, excuse me, parking law. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. And thank you all folks uh, who came from San Pedro and Wilmington uh, to make public comment. Appreciate that. It's on the record now. DOT has all that information. They understand the complexity of the issue. And we ask you, DOT, to report back to us in a timely manner. I have not put a date certain in here. Uh, do you want a date certain or do you want to say uh, you'll get back to us as soon as you're able it's to? Say the next meeting. you you got time. Let's get it. You're, you're, I don't want your meter to expire. I want to be clear, um, please. Um, uh, I think we can ask for about 30 day report back. It would be fair. But if, about a 30 day report back. 30 day report back. Yeah, I think there's a few. We want to also reach out to some of the businesses. Our office has received um, a few calls as well that the um, owners of those businesses, some of them along 9th Street, have asked for uh, not because of the issues of employees parking. Um, so there are other voices, and we want to work with the community that's here, work with the council office, look at what Council Member LaBanche has suggested as a bagging option, and look at all these different things. So we just need a little bit more time to put a, a thoughtful report with some analysis that we can be before you with options. 30 days makes sense, yes. you guys? Okay, so moved. Uh, we will continue this it's item. Just, just the point. If it's if it's, a report back. If they could come sooner, because if, if, you, if you agree on bagging, work with the council office, then you have a 90-day, 120-day period. Look at it. If there's certain streets that meters should remain, then have them remain. If you want to remove them, where are the churches? What's our policy around churches? Um, I believe that particular church has a large um, off-street facility. They have a, a big parking lot in the back, isn't it? All right. The... All right. Okay. Anyways, we'll work with them. I'd certainly support a report back, but before you start taking money out of the treasury, I'd like to have it come back. <laughs> Because I think if you start reducing the yeah. revenue, right. uh, it's something in which uh, we, it's a larger issue than the local council. Yeah, uh, council member, our, re our report back will obviously have just recommendations. We wouldn't do anything without council action. So it's just putting the costs, the benefits, the analysis in a written format for you as a committee to then direct us. Sure, and you give the public a chance to look at the report and they can analyze it as well and they can respond to that. Councilman, if I may, um, Don Lou from Councilman Janice Hans' office. I, I wanted to address Councilman Park's question about the revenue because we do take it very seriously. Um, and, and doing some math um, with uh, DOT's information, um, the 427,000 from the 919 meters means that each meter um, generates about $464 per year. We currently pay. Um, we lease those those uh, solar meters at a cost of $365 a year, which means each meter is achieving revenue of about only $99 a year, which means really 25 cents a day. Now, we understand the importance of the revenue, but we believe that for 25 cents a day, it probably isn't worth the... In the enforcement area, this is $500,000. 
I believe that the enforcement will still continue because we can continue to enforce tickets on the two-hour limit. I think if you enforce, if you're expecting to enforce on a chalk on the tires, having done that in my prior life, you're not going to get nearly what the meters are. And when you start putting people in the sense of doing what a meter can do, you're now getting more costly because you don't have to pay attention. I understand. Medical or workers' comp on a meter. I just don't see how the revenue is going to increase from that, you know, in this economy. Well, the thing is this. I think every business community, you can make that same pitch for Lamert Park. You can make it around USC. You can make it the same pitch on Prince Edward Boulevard. Everybody would like to park for free, and everybody would like to have unlimited parking. Unfortunately, we can't do both. And so the issue is the reason the meters are there to turn over. I understand. And so I think we're making it as convenient as possible. That's a major revenue hit to be talking close between $700,000 to $800,000 between enforcement. And we could speculate that enforcement would remain the same, but we kind of would have to look at that and say probably not. Right. And if I heard you correctly, one of the items to look at was, I think, Councilmember LeBond, you mentioned that Councilmember Rosenthal on a rolling back. I thought, is that something you want us to look at? I'm just looking if it went to a quarter. It's going to cost you to remove them. But if it went to a quarter, I don't think it should be removed unless you take a survey. I count on the council person and their deputies to make the assumption. I also know sometimes there's parts in my district on Lancashire, which where the first parking meter was installed in 1949, between Burbank Boulevard and Chandler, there's no meters. And, you know, you could take some of those meters on the vacant lots in San Pedro and put them there because there's a commercial strip for the turnover. There is a petition somewhere or a, and they used to call them merchants associations, for DOT, pre-D, off-street parking, Walter King, who ran it up on the 21st floor. Those, there's something that established each meter in San Pedro. So a petition could establish it back. I would just say look at it. I would also say do a pause and put cover heads on it. It is a redevelopment area. It's Beacon Street, right? And there's a lot of artists and things of this nature here. And I will close by saying, Mr. Rosendahl, I want the city of Los Angeles to be a fine city, not a fine city. I don't want you to think you're going to get a ticket everywhere. And just to be. I'd like it to be a solvent city. Ah, that's true. But I'll be solvently fine. Well, thank you, everybody, for your comments. Uh, last comment. Yeah, just to be clear, this is just for the on-street. Uh, this is the request is only for the on-street meters, right. not the off-street. Right. Just wanted to make sure that's clear. We look forward to your report back, and thank you again, community, for coming. Appreciate it. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Oh, man. This is meeting.